there's quite a few motion graphics designers out there that don't get as much recognition as designers in the other fields, even though they're supremely talented. I've never quite figured out why that is. The best motion designers I've known have all mastered the basics of graphic design before learning After Effects or Cinema 4D. Things like color, topography, composition, hierarchy. All of the things that you learn when you're starting out in graphic design also apply to motion graphics. I can often tell when a motion designer comes from a film or animation background. They may be good at editing or animating, but when it comes time to position elements on the screen, they're seldom as good as people who went to design school. One thing that sets motion graphics apart is the importance of image making. If you're making a print ad or a book cover, you can create something pretty beautiful with just a few images, but you can rarely get away with that in motion graphics. It takes a lot of material to make a 30 second spot look compelling. This first piece was created by a major production company, but everything here could be done by one person. All you need is a couple of royalty-free illustration books and a good camera and a lighter. This is for the Sundance Film Festival, and the theme for this particular year was stories. I think their point is that stories can be told in a very simple manner like this one. And that's okay as long as the story is compelling. The DIY style of this is also a little bit of a nod to the types of films shown at Sundance. Here's another project by Digital Kitchen. This piece was illustrated, designed, and animated all by the same person, Elliot Lim. But don't let that intimidate you because that's not typical. All the visuals in this piece are done in the same style, which holds the whole thing together. Notice the pacing. There's never too much information on the screen to digest. It's always the right amount. If you show too much at once, you'll overwhelm the viewer. Another neat thing about this is instead of one main storyline, there's several mini storylines going on throughout. And because most of them are simple loops, they're easy to digest. Tissues plucked out of a box, lips smooching, a beating heart in a person's hand. All of these animations hint at what the show is about. That last piece was very visually driven. On this one, the audio leads and the visuals follow. Medical costs in our country are growing at a frightening pace, which is no secret to anyone who pays health insurance premiums. America spends $2.5 trillion a year on health care. Five million will be spent in the time it takes to watch this commercial. That's not just a big number. It's a big problem. We spend much more per person than any other developed country, yet our life expectancy lags far behind. Why is this happening? Well, the reasons range from waste and inefficiency to the exploding cost of technology and drugs. We eat and smoke too much and exercise too little. We don't have the information we need to find the best medical prices, and doctors get paid for the quantity rather than the quality of care they provide. This is a daunting situation, but it's not too late to fix it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina invites you to learn how we're fighting to rein in medical costs, and how you can too, at letstalkcost.com. The narrator cites many figures in this that need context. The visuals help provide that context. They bring meaning to the numbers. This is Pez. He's probably the world's most well-known stop-motion animator.
His work is compelling because of the materials he uses. He finds objects that live in different worlds from the scenes he places them in. Because all the materials are so unpredictable, you really want to know what he'll do next. Another thing I'd like to mention is that since his style is always the same, there's a narrow range of clients he can work for. Stop motion like this would rarely make sense for a company like Apple, Verizon, or McDonald's. It would be off-brand. Their commercials highlight specific products, so it would rarely make sense to create a stop-motion world like this around, say, a Big Mac hamburger. It would distract you from the burger. When you're working at a production company that does motion graphics, you'll often do style frames for the agency or the company before actual animation begins. These style frames provide a glimpse of what the final piece might look like. A few designers, each with her own style, will work for a couple days on their own style frames. Then three to five different options will be presented to the agency or client. Once a certain style is signed off on by the client, then you'll know exactly what the final motion piece should look like. Here are several style frames from one option that Buck did. ESPN ended up picking these. You'll notice that some of the style frames are closer to the final motion piece than others. There could be any number of reasons why this is. Maybe certain angles in the footage weren't good, or maybe the client thought some of the monsters were too aggressive. All of this is a normal part of the process. X Games Los Angeles starts June 28th on ESPN2. A large part of the motion graphics industry includes creating title frames for TV shows and movies. Here's the title design for Six Feet Under. All of this title sequence is live action, and in this case the designer was also the director. So because it's live action, how would a designer approach this differently from a director? Well, a designer might start with the concept of death and work back from there. If she thought the project would be better served with illustrated titles, then she'd do that. 
or if she thought some kind of collage would be better suited, then she'd do that. Only after exploring her options would she decide to do it live action. The other thing 